It is wonderful to be able to worship the Lord in his house with all of you today, with your steadfast commitment, which you have dedicated to God. Uh, we would like to recognize in great appreciation uh, Grayson, you know, our one of the teenage youth group members who comes almost every Sunday to ring the bell, which is not easy for him to do, but she you know, used all his strength to ring the church bell just prior to the beginning of our church service. And also, we would like to thank the following persons who have been helping to clean the sanctuary each week. Andrea White, Mary Chase, Jill Lathrop, Janet Finlay, Cindy Van Allen, Emily and Anne Van Allen, along with our custodian, Gar Burlett. Sunday school will resume on Sunday which is the third Sunday of September, September 20th, as long as schools are back in session. For more information, please contact Sandy Cesaria or the church office. Third, the Mary Mask Maskers, we named the group who gathered together to make masks, so we call them Mary Mask Makers. They will be meeting on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. to cut and sew masks for the Glowersville School District. So we are going to bring all those uh, masks we make every week uh, to the uh, Global School District. If you would prefer to make the mask at your home, yet in need of materials and patterns, please contact the office. Next, Brooks Barbecue, which is our annual Brooks Barbecue, will be held on Tuesday, October 13th, serving from 4 p.m. till sold out at Runnings parking lot. A chicken dinner is $12, and chicken only is $9. Tickets on sale in the church office. Next Monday, of course, every Monday, 1.30 p.m., Bible study will be held with Cindy Van Allen at Sandy Harrington's house. And nomination meeting, Sunday, September 20th. Yeah, that is the same Sunday we have uh, uh, Sunday school reopened. So nominations uh, meeting. Sunday, September 20th, after 10.30 service, please let Isabel know if you are available, if you are able to make the meeting. And also, SPRC, Step Parish Relations Committee, uh, has scheduled their first meeting uh, for September 16th, Wednesday evening, 6.30 p.m., in the fellowship hall. We are going to continue our service.
our congregation has been greatly blessed with our worship music team who has been really sacrificing all they have during this summer of COVID-19 quarantine. Uh, we love to worship God with our music, uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, this morning. Uh, we have a prayer concerns. Uh, Dorothy and Dick Johnson are asking for prayers for Sandra and Larry Costin, Dorothy's niece. Their son is in Rochester Burn Center. Sharon Diffendorf is asking for prayers for Douglas Lathrop. Everybody knows who Douglas Lathrop is. He is now having he has test done on Friday at St. Peter's Hospital and will be staying the night. Betty Twardy, also who is now with us in worship, is seeking, asking for prayers for her grandson, Jonathan Twardy. He is having health issues. And also Jan Sears uh, is asked for prayers for her family because her brother George passed away all of a sudden uh, last Thursday in the middle of uh, exercise, physical exercise in YMCA in Minnesota last August, uh, uh, you know, Thursday, uh, August 20th on Long Island. Mary Chase is asking for prayers for Lynn Chase Tower, Ron's uh, sister. She has been diagnosed with kidney cancer and has to have surgery soon to have it removed and to determine what kind of cancer at what stage it is. And I have a joy to share with you from the Kim family, uh, the Second granddaughter of Kim family was born last Friday early in the morning, around 4 o'clock in the morning. So instantly I had to hurry uh, down to the Rochester uh, to take care of the first granddaughter. Uh, she, her name is Eleanor Noel Kim. Eleanor is derived from Hebrew word which means uh, God is my light, so that has the meaning. Eleanor Noel Kim, she was born seven pound twenty two ounce. <laughs> okay, let us uh, pray. Father, what a wonderful, gorgeous morning you have provided this morning, as we love to come to your house, your tabernacle, where we love to commune with you where we want to pour out our souls in prayer, where we want to uh, sing praises to you in no matter what circumstances. Uh, thank you for your great blessing through our act of faith to worship you in your house. We thank you also for enabling us to bow down our heads in humility, pouring out our wishes, our concerns for one another in prayer. You are greatest God. You alone is our God because you did uh, so many marvelous things sometimes to surprise uh, your children in an unexpected way. So do we continue to expect that happen in our everyday life through our faith. We gather together to tell of the power of your mighty acts and we want to sing about your wonderful, abundant goodness. And we also want to proclaim marvelous deeds you have done through your son, Jesus Christ. You are always uh, loving, compassionate on those uh, whom you have called and responded to your call. And you are always, uh, love. your love is abound, abounding. And uh, you always listen to the cry when they call upon you. The way we feel and sense your strong presence is the way we sing out to the Lord, particularly in the night. Even though many people love to sing in the uh, daylight uh, when everything goes well, but you have also taught us and gave us songs in the darkness. 
We ask you, Lord, to keep us always in such a cheerful, optimistic, and positive mindsets through the faith you have put and imparted deep down in our souls. We ask you to be with all those individuals whose names have been reported brought to be for your presence in this house this morning. We ask you to visit each one of them with your healing hand, with your powerful presence, to be with their companion and to be the source of their renewal and their everlasting hope. We ask for also many victims of wildfires in California and the victims of hurricanes in, down in Louisiana. We ask your Lord to be a great supplier when they are in desperate need of your interference. We also thank you for giving us uh, beautiful uh, voices with which we love to sing and lift up your holy name every time we gather together. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's time for us to return our thanks to God through offering.
says, where is God, my maker? Who gives songs to his mouth? Who teaches us more than he teaches the beasts of the earth? He makes us wiser than the birds in the sky. He does not answer when people cry out because of the arrogance of the wicked. Indeed, God does not listen to their empty plea. The Almighty pays no attention to it. How much less, then, will he listen? When you say that you do not see him, that your case is before him, and you must wait for him. And further, that his anger never punishes, and he does not take the least notice of wickedness. The second reading comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 22 to 31. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into the prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. This is the word of the Lord.
A man who took great pride in his lawn, when they found himself with a large cup of dandelions, he tried every method he knew to get rid of them. Still, they plagued him. Finally, he wrote the Department of Agriculture. He enumerated all the things he had tried and closed his letter with the question, what shall I do now? In due course, the reply came, gentlemen, we suggest you to learn to love them. What a great answer. In life, there are always some issues that are annoying us, bothering us, no matter what we do to remove them. In general, there are two different groups of people. Under the same circumstance, one walks the road of life with a positive reaction to troubles, the other with negative. Negative people cry, complain, mourn, and groan. Their eyes focus on their losses instead of gains, and focus not on things they still have, but things they do not have. This naturally leads to a low self-esteem, which in turn produces entirely to a new set of problems. They resort gradually to chemicals like uh, alcohol and drug, or compulsive gambling, or immoral sex. That's the trend we see among their lifestyles. But when we relate all our life issues to God, whether they are good or bad, the people of faith cope, cope with whatever situations bestowed upon them through possibility thinking and attitude. This is what Paul did when he confidently said in Romans chapter 837, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Many people, of course, can be conquerors as they step on safe zone of life during daylight. But people lose confidence and wins before darkness as they face light in their journey of life. They are conquered by darkness rather than conquer darkness. Yet Paul says, we are more than conquerors. The people of faith cope with it creatively by singing, just as we sing. We love this congregation, Foothills congregation, love to sing a lot in praises of God. So uh, the people of faith, they always uh, uh, you know, creatively by singing a song in the night, in the dark times. For they have God who gives them songs in the night. In today's Old Testament text, Job's friend says, even though God does not answer to people who cry out under a load of oppression, Neither does he respond to those who pleaded for relief from the arms of the wicked. The people of faith know God who gives them songs in the night. Despite prayers not answered without any reason, the experience of God who gives them songs in the night rather than in the day. You know who was one of them in the Bible story? It was uh, David, King David, who was uh, walking often through the valley of shadow of death. To David, God gave songs when he had uh, sleepless nights in anxiety. When he had gone through the life-threatening experience, 
Yes, night is the season of terror and alarm to most people. However, in the life of true believers, night has its songs. For God gives them songs in the night. Most people can sing in the daytime, daylight, when everything goes well. When the cup is full, people draw inspiration from it and start singing. Enjoy. When wealth, riches roll in abundance around them, any man can sing to God who gives them a plenteous harvest. And it is easy to sing when we can read the music book by daylight. But the skillful singer, skillful singer is the one who can sing even when there is not a ray of light to read by. And I would say every one of you who is now worshiping with me this morning, who came to worship, and sing praises to God is indeed a skillful singer. It is not because you sing from a music book in the day, but because you sing from your heart, even in the night. For you have the music stored in the inward book of your own, living spirit. Then why does God give his children songs in the night? Why not in the day? It is because in the night of a Christian's experience, God is his only song. Not us. God is his only song. If it be daylight in my heart, I can sing songs exposing usually myself, exposing usually my pride, my merit, my excellency, my skill, my wealth, my intelligence, you name it. But let the night come. All my glory, all my splendor, appear to have, you know, withered, and now I have nothing left to sing of but to God, but my God. It is strange that when God showers people with his blessings, they generally see their hearts more on the blessings than on the giver of blessings. But when the night comes and God sweeps all the blessings and mercies away, then they say, now, O oh Lord, now, O oh God, I have nothing to sing of but you. I have come to you and to you only. I had one assistance that was, that was full of water. I drank from them then, but now the streams, my streams are dry. O oh Lord, I cough, cough no streams. I drink from no fount, but from you. That is our prayer. Yes, it is in the night. We sing of God. We sing of God alone. And that is also heart singing. You know, you know, when we hear a man singing a song in the night of trouble, we are quite sure it is a hearty song. If we sang under a lot of pain and groan and grief, they would show our hearts to be right in our song. Nightingales, everybody knows nightingales. They are so named because they frequently sing at night. Of course, they sing in the day too. Yet their song is no tear server. Very, uh, what, no tear server, particularly at night. It is because it is the still night 
when nobody wants to sing. It is quiet night that makes her song sweet. Make her song beautiful, even inspire, inspiring. If she sang on in the daytime, she might be thought to sing no more sweetly than other birds. And they sing, do you know this, song? this one I found from the, you know, the, uh, the encyclopedia when I was studying about the uh, nightingale, I knew, I came to know this. They sing even more loudly in urban or near urban environments in order to overcome the background noises. Isn't it something? It means the more troubles you and I have in life, more loudly we sing in the night. So does your song become sweet and hard to God's ear. We can sing high, you know. We can sing high. When all is joyful and bright, we can sing aloud in praise with all our uh, friends and relatives and every weekend party. But when circumstances are unfavorable and providence appears averse, we cannot sing praise to any but to our God. For God alone can furnish us with the songs and inspires the song, inspires us in the night through those songs. The background of most inspirational hymns proves this. True Christians get their songs from God in the night. God gives them inspiration and teaches them how to sing in, night, in the night. Horatio Spafford, you know, every, everyone knows who you know, Horatio Spafford was, who wrote, uh, It is well with my soul. When he lost all his beautiful four daughters, in the midst of the cold North Atlantic Ocean by shipwreck. Charlotte Elliot wrote, Just as I am, when she was a helpless invalid. Helpless invalid. And also Fanny Crosby was a blind woman, yet I missed her night was produced so many inspiring songs as blessed assurance uh, pass me not O gentle savior and many other immortal songs we don't have to go wandering here and there in a tavern pumping up our hearts to make it glad do not go to this comforter or uh, that Instead, come to God, our maker, and ask him to give you a song in the night, just as uh, David did often in God's tabernacle. We are, we are a poor dry well. We know that when a pump is dry, we must pour water down it, first of all. And then we will get some water up, coming up. So is it with us. When we are dry, come to God and ask him to pour some water down us. And then we will get some water up from his spirit. His water will become in us a spring which will provide us with joy and song. Then what do we sing about in the night? Well, we can say, it is night now. We can sing, but I can remember when it was daylight. Yes, when we were walking in the daylight, we had once a glad heart, a buoyant spirit. Once our eyes were, you know, the full of fire, enthusiasm. Once our foot was light. Once we would sing for joy 
and sing for the ecstasy of our heart, then remember God, who made you sing yesterday in such a wonderful circumstances, has not left you in the night. For he is not a daylight God who cannot know his children still staying in darkness. He loves you now as much as ever. Even though God has left you and me a little while in the dark, it is to prove you, to make you know him better, trust him better, and serve him more. It is night, but it won't be, it will not be always a gloomy night with you. It's darkness now, but you know his promises are still sweet to you. We see how true it is in today's New Testament story. Even though they were severely stripped and beaten and flogged and thrown into the dungeon, Luke, a physician of Paul, who wrote the book of Acts, this book, tells us that in the middle of night, not in the middle of daytime, in the middle of night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They kept on singing, singing, because God gave them a song in the night. And look, describes how their situation had drastically changed by earthquake. Likewise, dear beloved, though our paths are stone, stone with you know, the thorns now, we know it will be the king's highway. Because our God, the king of the kings, the Lord of Lords will be walking with us. Just as Paul and Silas had experienced in Philippi, we can be more than conquerors in the night with the songs God gives us. Then night turns to a new one, new thing for us, to such an act of faith as singing, even in the night. I remember an old experimental Christian speaking about the great pillars of our faith. He was a sailor. He was then on board the ship, and there were various, there was sundry, you know, a huge posts on the shore to which the ships were usually fastened by throwing a cable over them. After he was told by his preacher about many, great many promises of God, he said to preacher, Preacher, I know they are good, strong promises like those uh, sundry, huge posts on the shore. But I cannot get near enough to the shore to throw my cable around them. That is the problem. Yes, it often happens in our journey of life that God's past mercies, God's past forgiveness of all our sins, His loving kindness and loving cares, even His promises of our future would be good, sure, post to hold on to. But we have not get faith. We haven't got faith to get near enough to throw our cable around them. That is the problem. We go slipping down the streams of unbelief, doubt. But let me remind you, Christianity is not a thing merely for your knowledge your reasoning or argumentation. 
It is a thing that demands your faith. A true religion is more than a word, more than theory, more than liturgy. It is the expression of whole yourselves before God. Yes, your preacher can preach thousand sermons to prove the gospel, but I cannot prove it half. So whereas you will prove through singing, you're singing in the night. Your singing in the night of trouble generates an amazing, amazing power, even to draw your neighbors. You are sick. There is your neighbor who laughs at your religion. Let him, let her come into your house full of songs God gives you in the night. Then your neighbor will say, Oh wow, there is something in that. Yes, the songs we sing in the night are those that show we have real powerful faith in God. So when you are in trouble, sing. Just as sing often when we gather together in God's house. Sing in praise of God. You don't know who is near, who is listening to your song in the night. Perhaps there will be many a, a heart cheered by your song. Particularly these days when the whole world is messed up by coronavirus pandemic and natural disaster, wildfires and hurricanes and flooding down, uh, down there. When there are many distressed brothers and sisters who have lost their health and their jobs and have all broken hearts and spirit, perhaps they will be bound up. By your song in the night. Then as Paul declared, you will be more than conquerors and you prove your true religion to others. Show them the evidence of your internal piety and inner strength. Then you will give the best possible proof of Christianity. Therefore, try and sing songs in the night. For they are so rare that if you do sing them, you will honor your God and bring him much more glory than ever before. That is the true worship in our walk of faith. And all you can say, Amen.
us pray. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Particularly in the night, particularly when all the providences appear adverse. It is the night in which you have given us song to sing. So help us to keep singing songs in the night, in your strength, in your promise. And now may the grace of God, our Father, and the love of the Son, Jesus Christ, and continuing strength and guidance and healing power of the Holy Spirit be within among you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.